have uh, in the standard page four matiangi to suspend betting firm permits this could not be another cause for depression by the way uh, but uh, again of course um, betting becoming an issue and a matter of concern given that it is also eating into families um, income and the money that they would expect by giving this hope of winning billions and changing your life uh, at the you know uh, twist of a button but there you go matiangi to suspend betting firms permits if they do not uh, register their taxes yes for me i think we need to regulate the uh, gaming and betting industry we seem to have opened our doors to each and every person who wants to establish this kind of business we are raised in terms of addi uh, value addition to society there is no any evidence that uh, those uh, those services add any value to our society so for me probably kenya needs to relook its laws its tax laws we see whether these guys are getting away with a lot of millions mm. and we certainly need to also just uh, introspect and look at ourselves as kenyans because what is this that is driving us to do certain things uh, betting being one of them to try and have a certain lifestyle overnight without necessarily working hard for it or working for it um, and uh, that's obviously a matter of concern uh, for Kenyans in terms of what we need to do. Matiangi to suspend betting firms permits to get yourself a copy of that newspaper of the newspaper and uh, have a read of that on what that is exactly about and uh, that will definitely be one article that might be of interest to you particularly uh, if you are one who has um, uh, you know who has a young people in the house because then it definitely would be one that would help you look at that so um, do get yourself a copy of the standard and at this point i'd like to uh, introduce daniel juma who's joining us now welcome sir uh, he is from the global peace foundation and uh, welcome to the set uh, we're still going through the dailies and uh, we are now looking at um, page seven where we have another issue that maybe has affected the youth as well and not just the youth but major many kenyans and that is uh, bungay who is a former uh, world champ in 800 meters coming out to say that alcohol nearly ruined him and maybe just to bring into the conversation daniel uh, juma mr juma the question here being um where we are headed as a society socially speaking we've started off with depression um, on social media mm -hmm. we've looked at betting becoming an uh, an issue we also have alcoholism which again is another issue that we are battling with as a country uh thank you i think uh the country has so many issues to deal with and uh um you know those are just some some of the signs huh, of what is going on um as you know the economy the economy doesn't favor you know especially the common man you know we have um, uh, basically two sets of tribes huh? the, the the rich and the poor and the poor in this country and that's why you see things like betting you know uh, betting companies actually um, most of the people you know in uh, that are poor mm -hmm. are the ones that are mainly involved in betting and again if you look at things like uh, depression depression i've been to other countries it's actually much worse in korea for example if a family a family goes bankrupt or is uh, is not able to meet uh, its financial, financial needs, obligation they go they commit suicide mm. you know you find people you know jumping into the speed rains eh, just because he's not able to pay his debts he's not able to feed his family so the embarrassment is too much to endure mm. yeah so you can see if that happens then um uh depression actually is real it sets in it sets in yes. uh senator irungu kagata your thoughts on uh, alcoholism becoming a problem because again this is an area that probably affects a, a very hard, uh, large demographic of our youth the youth are the bigger number in this country and they're probably the ones who are affected by alcoholism so this needs to be addressed in one way or the other to me, the issue of uh, of indulgence in alcohol is becoming a global and a regional concern, and uh, probably we need to reconsider whether we can ban advertisement, just like the way we dealt with cigarettes. And from that time, I noted there was a reduction in uh, smoking. Probably we need to consider banning advertisement, 
Uh, so that anyone who wants to buy alcohol, he can do that out of, the, out of his own volition, not a portrayal that uh, drinking alcohol gives a certain sense of modernity or uh, a flashy Enjoyment. life. Yes. Mm. You know. All right, and uh, page 11, looking at Matters Internationals and Envoy's South African minister meet over xenophobia attacks. There has been a worrying spate of xenophobia attacks in South Africa, specifically in Durban. Uh, two people were reportedly killed over the weekend in the port city of Durban. Daniel, you, ha you work with the Global Peace Foundation, and of course this would be an area that you'd have um, you know, expertise on how this needs to be dealt with. But maybe starting off with what is the cause of xenophobia in South Africa, given the fact that this is not, it's not an isolated case. It's not the first time that we've heard about xenophobia in South Africa. Yeah, xenophobia has been there. It's a real situation. And um, it's very sad that uh, uh, this should be happening in South Africa. Um, as you remember, when uh, South Africa was going through hard times of apartheid, uh, fellow African countries actually, you know, uh, joined hands with them to call for the end of apartheid. And um, uh, I, I know one of the reasons why we have this xenophobia is because uh, competition for for employment, competition for resources, where you know the indigenous South Africans are feeling like uh, foreigners from I'm other countries are jobs. coming to take their jobs. Mm. But that should not be an issue. I think, especially South Africa, as a country that has been the longest colonized, you know, you know it, the economy is actually better than others mm. because it was uh, colonized the longest. I think they should be able to embrace their brothers and sisters uh, from other parts of um, of Africa. Africa, you know, because actually these people are going, they're actually developing South Africa. We have Kenyans working very, very hard doing business. We have uh, uh, people from various countries actually uh, contributing to the economy of South Africa. So I, I really hope that the government of South Africa can move in with, uh, with speed and stem this. This is uh, a crime. You know, it should not be allowed in, um, in modern day, uh, you know, democracy. And I think um, I'm hoping that uh, South Africans will actually, because this is actually worse than apartheid. If you, I mean, they, they suffered under apartheid, and they're now, you know, chasing or killing their fellow Africans. Which uh, some feel is very unfair. Senator Rongo yes. Kangata, there are those who feel, especially uh, those from the neighboring countries, that during apartheid, they took in South Africans and took care of them as refugees. But now, uh, South Africa is not willing to give the same favor back to them. There is a major problem which people are ignoring in South Africa. Its rate of unemployment is about 30%. In fact, I was in Durban the other day, and we were told by the area city county administration that their rate of unemployment is about 30%. 30%, mm -hmm. 30 is a huge, huge rate of unemployment. It can cause a revolution. In such a situation, it's usually very easy for uh, other guys with some ulterior motives, eh? the, the so-called xenophobic uh, politicians or even community leaders, to take advantage of that and start inciting the community against, let's say, a set of other black people. So to me, that is the main reason which is gearing these attacks. And therefore, the solutions lie, in my own opinion, addressing the issue of unemployment generally in Southern Af in, in, in South Africa. In South Africa. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you will have a situation where uh, the blacks who are there, who are historically marginalized, they are fighting over resources with other groups, and therefore they have to revert back to something that can exclude mm -hmm. the rest so that they can increase their chances of getting those opportunities. Getting those so opportunities. I would urge the authorities in South Africa think hard on how to tackle unemployment. And now that you mentioned you were in uh, Durban not too long ago, is, would you recommend somebody going there? Is it safe? Sometimes what we see in the media um, sometimes looks or feels exaggerated depending on where somebody is. Would you recommend that some, it's safe to go? Uh, well, the truth is officially it is known to be a, a crime ridden city. In fact, even the authorities will warn you. So the crime in South Africa is very high. I think, uh, 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 incidentally, I compare South Africa with uh, Egypt, Cairo, where I also subsequently went. And uh, somehow I came to a realization 
I think culture has something to do with crime and criminality. Mm. Because in Cairo, it's the very opposite of South Africa. Mm. It is very peaceful. It's a very peaceful city. Cool. But when you go to South Africa, I would imagine because of what we call social disorganization, several cultures converging and clashing. I think the, that somehow explains why South Africa is very volatile. Volatile. All right, and uh, let's now change focus and take a look at the Daily Nation. We start off with the headlines. A new scandal of 45 billion paid for stalled projects. So it looks like this country has become a country of scandals. And wastage 50 projects by state corporations either stalled or never took off in the first place. But they have lost the taxpayers billions of shillings. And this is a story on the Daily Nation. Daniel, we have had billions and billions and billions, and we keep hearing more and more lost. Uh, it looks like um, Kenya has a bottomless hole where money just goes. It's, uh, it's very sad, uh, yeah, Gitonga, it's very, very sad uh, that uh, we are not just about to see the end of this lost money, stolen billions. Um, and especially when you see that um, part of the country, uh, especially Turkana, is going hungry, uh, it is very sad that um, our country, especially the people who are responsible for managing our resources, can allow this to happen. Um, we, <clears throat> at the same time, it's very sad that uh, we keep on politicizing, you know, especially the fight against corruption. You know, we would like to see action taken mm -hmm. once and for all. We want to see the state agencies in charge of uh, investigating and, uh, and prosecuting these cases mm -hmm. to start actually, you know, you know, making arrests and making sure that uh, the people responsible are brought behind bars. Uh, Gitonga, some of the things happening in this country, if they happen in other countries, you know, like Korea, like Europe, we would see so many people in jail. For example, in Korea, no less than the former president is in jail, you know, for issues of corruption. Of corruption. But mm. you hear in this country, we have untouchables. You know, uh, you have a minister in charge of that ministry, mm. but they are still in, uh, in office. This is what should have happened. The CSS in charge of those ministries should have stepped aside by now. Any ministry where we have, you know, you know, which is suspected to have lost billions, you know, when the investigation is going on, the person, the accounting officer in that ministry should have taken responsibility uh, by now. So this is, uh, you know, it's very sad. It's, but, it's uh, very sad. Yeah. Right, Senator Irungu Kangata, the bottomless pit that we seem to have in Kenya, do you see this dragon of corruption being slayed? We have lost so much money so far. There's still more billions being discovered. Now, this particular story is different in the sense that these are smaller projects, uh, but still, when put together, uh, small monies that are being lost here and there, but when put together, it still adds up to billions. And some of the projects, I mean, have not even taken off. It would be one thing if maybe it was standard but this is now even projects that have been allocated money but it does not even start yes in fact i would imagine the amounts were bigger you know the auditors uh, they also have their own limitations they cannot be able to audit each and every project mm -hmm. there is a, a what we call an auditing uh, what we call an auditing principle of materiality mm -hmm. meaning you only audit that which is huge otherwise i would imagine that figure must be huge even be more yes taking into account they don't inspect each and every project mm -hmm. but i think two things ought to happen and one is happening one, President Uhuru Kenyatta is leading a very good fight against corruption. I would imagine once we arrest and probably lock up some of those big shots, the positive vibe may now escalate downwards and probably make the state machinery more competent and corrupt free. I know that will not happen in one day. I know that also is hinged on convictions, but we say a journey of many miles starts with, starts one, with one step. With one step. Right. But on the other hand, I think the bottom line must always be one. Mm. 
to reduce the size of government and government bureaucracy. All right. The more you have a huge bureaucracy, the higher it is, all factors being constant, that bureaucracy being abused for corruption. Okay, and today on a Political Point, which we'll start off at around 7, would like to look at uh, some of those things, corruption being one of them, especially given as we focus on the State of the Nation address to be given by the President on Thursday, but that's coming up. But page 2 of the Daily Nation, Kenya, uh, Kenya on the spot as cheating at varsity hits worrying levels. This again adds up to a very dishonest nation that we've become because when we look at some of the things we are doing, including examinations, we've had to uh, have, you know, police literally guard examinations by virtue of the fact that uh, it, it's become such high stake uh, things that people do that. But now, even at university level, mm -hmm. we have people uh, cheating. Daniel? What are we doing with ourselves as a nation, given that even examinations are cheated? I was talking to a doctor yesterday, incidentally, and he was telling me that it's worrying that sometimes mm. you'll have people who've even gone through medical school, mm. but because they have been dishonest all along their journey, even at the point where they qualify, they really do not know what they're doing. It's very sad. It's very sad. Um, cheating has been one of the you know the saddest phenomena you know in this in this country and um, um uh, when matiangi cs matiangi came to the minister of education you could see what he did you know with the current cs you know to make sure that there was no cheating in 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 examinations in uh, in high schools uh, and in in in, uh, in the lower in lower schools but um the issue as you rightfully said is there in the universities um, where you find uh, basically sometimes students don't even attend classes. You know, they don't attend classes, you know, uh, and uh, some of the universities, most of the universities, quality universities, especially the University of Nairobi, they have regulations. How many classes you needed to have attended, you know, um, and some of these are in the marks. And, um, uh, but unfortunately, cheating is there. You find um, students, you know, you know, you know they hide you know, uh, Material stuff, materials stuff under the table. Under the table. And mm. this just tells you that uh, we are mainly a cheating nation. We are a cheating nation and uh, it starts from high schools. Everyone is cheating. Even the leaders, the leadership are cheating. When you see instances of corruption, you know, these are people that were put into, in, into areas of responsibility and they're cheating blatantly. And um, then everyone thinks this is the norm. This is the norm. And then that's why I am very hopeful that the new CS for education um, will move with speed so that we are able to transform education. You know, education. But, but the question is, do, is, is it education that we need to transform or do we need something else that uh, will speak to us at a very basic level? Because here are children who are cheating. We have parents who uh, assist them with mm -hmm. the cheating. We have teachers who uh, assist them. So even if the minister or the CS for education came in and with very stringent rules, it looks like our software is already corrupt. It's already damaged. There's something wrong in our system. Senator. What, what needs to shift? Well, uh, before I address myself to that question, I have taken uh, some interest in that story because it has some peculiarity. And the peculiarity is on two issues. One, the impact of globalization. Because you can see they are talking of young students who are here who are assisting lazy students in the Western world. Uh, so to me, that's negative and positive. Negative in the sense that they are assisting in cheating, which is wrong. But also positive in the sense that uh, it shows that we have skills. It is giving employment opportunities to our young graduates who don't have employment. Uh, but uh, also, and, 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 and the second issue generally is the issue of unemployed graduates. What shall we do to them so that we make them more competent? Probably they do more productive work instead of that. But of course, in a way also, I see an element of diffusion of skills. Because I assume, for instance, you are doing a term paper on behalf of our Harvard students in America. It, it means you are also accumulating some skills from the Western world. So in a way, uh, the government should think of how to harness that talent for me. There is an element of positiveness I see in that element into it, which the government must think outside the box to take advantage of that. Those young people, if I was to meet them, I would, I would ask myself, what skills have they acquired through that 
by constant publication of term papers, of essays, and that way, uh, the government then must think of how to make them probably more productive locally. Otherwise, it's not something one would come and say, okay, let us proceed and lock out these guys out of this business. There is some value addition I see in the entire enterprise the which time. these guys are doing. Okay. However, for me as a lecturer at the university, because I do teach, uh, it then means instead of just looking at the quality of the paper that has been presented to you by a student, consider but for instance, giving more weight to what we call oral presentations uh, as opposed to just looking at the write-up. Mm. Yes. All right, and uh, that's a story that you can get on the Daily Nation and see what's happening at the university level, and that's in terms of cheating. As we wind up, uh, page six, the return of URP with Jubilee divided, uh, Ruto allies go yellow. This was, uh, uh, you know, Deputy President William Ruto was in Kiambu County yesterday, and uh, it looks like some of his supporters are sending a message saying that URP needs to come back, and uh, they went yellow. Uh, Dan Daniel, your thoughts on this, given that the deputy president seems to have been a man under siege for the last few months? Um, I think that is an interesting um, uh, topic, um, given that uh, URP was supposed to have been disbanded, um, you know, to create Jubilee. Uh, but as you know, um, Jubilee, the Jubilee party has been going through a lot of challenges uh, uh, lately, uh, some of which have, have been blamed on, um, on the handshake. And... Um, um, uh, Gitonga, this country needs to strengthen multi-party democracy. We need to have political parties that are able to contribute towards uh, our democratization. Um, I was very hopeful when these parties were formed, major parties, if you can have a few major parties that can practice, you know, tenets of democracy, then this country is able to move forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you're seeing what's going on in Jubilee, um, within the Jubilee party, we have, you know, a section that is pro-handshake and a section that is anti-handshake. And um, even the fight against corruption is being politicized. And, um, you, know, you know, you find that uh, a section of the party is targeting another section of the party. And that's why you can see the people in URP are ganging up and saying that, uh, that uh, one of us is being targeted. And this is a problem with this country. Uh, whenever fight against corruption is, 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 is being actually carried on, you know, people go back to their tribes, to their parties, to say that we are being targeted. And that is why I am hoping, I'm still very hopeful that, um, you know, especially the, the ESCC, the DPP and the DCI,